All right, welcome back. This is MDoc, and we are <coughs> at Old Berg, starting here at uh, this spot in D7, 25, 28, clip 15. We're pretty much casting into this uh, into this hole here. And uh, we're starting at the end of bream time here. So I'm hoping to um, just kind of show you the very end of bream time. And then we're going to go try to catch a couple tench as well. So if you've watched videos from me before, uh, you know, some of my favorite spots are when you can basically be at one lake or river and sort of put a 24 hour fishing trip together. And um, so that's what we're attempting to do here between the bream and the uh in the tench so we'll see how it goes the bream is is spectacular it's a really good bream spot right now um and it's fascinating because we're sort of in the middle of a bait change on uh, on bream um not using garlic dough at all here which for the longest time of course garlic dough has been the king bream bait but uh if you've been playing the game for a while you know that it is eventually going to change and it seems like we are witnessing that change here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, initially, this spot was, I would say, known for pea porridge. And pea porridge does, in fact, still work. Garlic dough will still work, by the way, but I don't think it's working quite as well, at least in my testing, as these other baits. So right now, you can catch nice bream on three different baits here, and that's not counting garlic dough. And each of those baits have possible secondary catches that you'll make um, and maybe even more than just one secondary but secondary that show up a good bit uh, and I also want to show you the ground bait we're using because it's a slight variation on the norm as well um, so on the first rod here we have night crawlers and not only will you catch bream here off night crawlers but you will also occasionally catch burbot on this rod we have pea porridge and you can catch some really nice bream on uh, pea porridge. And then as a secondary catch, you may also get white bream off of, um, off of your pea porridge. And then on the middle rod, we have uh, cottage cheese dough. And not only can you catch really nice cottage cheese dough, uh, bream off the cottage cheese dough, you'll also catch some decent eyed right now off the cottage cheese dough and i'm not saying those are the only things you'll catch off those baits but those i think are the most likely secondary catches um, and all of them i would say are doing pretty comparably to each other specifically looking at the bream and i don't want to stay here too long because i want to if we're going to catch any tinge at all it'll likely be in the like morning hours so um, we'll throw this one in one more time and then, uh, and then sort of next fish, we'll start taking them out and, and then we'll move, but let's look at what we've caught. I, I usually tell people for me, at least I want to see 12 bream over one kilo to sort of justify it being a really good spot. I got started late, so we would have had probably one to three more than what we have over a kilo, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have 18 bream right now over a kilo, plus uh, the secondary catch that I mentioned. And so, yeah, I think this will work out good because this is probably when they're gonna start getting smaller. Um, and I think this spot, unlike some bream spots in the past, only gets stronger as you get into the nighttime, uh, later into the uh, overnight, like into the early morning hours. Uh, at night, I was still catching some good ones, like between, well, I started late. I didn't start till about uh, 11.30 p.m. And for that first hour or so, there were some decent ones, but then there were some small ones mixed in. But once I got to like 2 a.m., it was just really nice fish after really nice fish it felt like um and so you really kind of have an option here and in terms of of what you want to use all right so let's look i'm i am using a 6.4 liter i don't know that that's necessary i've just that's what i've settled on trying this time um, i've also fished here with 7.8 liters with 9.7 uh size fluorocarbon line and they all seem good uh the 
bream mix I'm using is pretty normal, except it's got that spicy garlic attractant. Um, and I have a size eight hook, eight hook on this middle rod. Uh, and that was really just by accident. I had um, intended to put a size six on all of them, but I, I didn't remember to change it. And so I ended up with size eight on the first two and size six on the third. I really didn't notice too much of a difference between them. So um, I think size six, eight, even 10 probably, you're gonna get similar results. All right, so now that it's morning, we're even seeing common roach show up. Um, but night crawlers are okay too. I think to me, the strongest right now might be uh, cottage cheese dough if you just wanna go for like the best for bream. But I'd have to do more testing because the other two cottage cheese, uh, sorry, um, pea porridge and night crawlers seemed very strong too. And so in doing that short of a test, I don't really have any, I can't really say anything with like confidence on which one's the strongest, but just from the beginning of the night to the end, cottage cheese dough was really good. And so now we're gonna switch all this over to size six hooks. And we're gonna put cheese on. And we're gonna put, I'll go ahead and show you the tench ground bait we're using. It was looking like this right now, hemp seed flour, breadcrumbs, maggots, melted cheese, and hemp seed oil. Now, you know, tench are very uh, streaky and finicky fish. Uh, this spot has been working. Trophies have been called in this spot by folks. Um, but it's not as dependable as the bream. So we'll see how it goes for us this time. Okay, so first fish is a tench. Now, hopefully I set all three of these up properly. We are at eight meter clip here. Um, if you have fished at Oldberg very much, you know where we are, obviously we're down here. Uh, looking into the pond, the boot shaped pond off of the bridge at 4720. Um, The only danger with this is when I uh, tested this spot earlier, I did get one grass carp. So again, I'm still using the 6.4 fluorocarbon liter size six hook. Um, and this is sort of trying to get dialed in to increase the chances of a trophy. Remember with Tinch, size 10 hook is fine for Tinch. Many, many times trophies have been caught on size 10 hooks. So I don't feel like you have to push it with size six because that is going to increase your exposure to larger grass carp. Uh, and also you're fine with going with a bigger leader as well. Just like the bream, uh, I think even going up to a 10, 9.7 or a 10 fluorocarbon leader would be just fine. Um, but we're trying to sort of like ratchet up our percentages to see if we can't get that trophy tinch uh, in this spot. So we're kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit. That also can mean, of course, spending a couple hours, uh, well, probably not a couple hours, but it can mean spending 20 minutes or so dealing with a, an unwanted grass carp. So just keep that in mind. 
but you can see that this tinch spot is healthy, at least in the mornings it is. You know, already we've had three over a kilo and those complement the bream so well to be able to have the kind of night we did with bream and then to translate into even just a few of these tinch during the day. Um, it's pretty fantastic, especially if you are at level for old berg and uh, cheese is pretty readily avail available. And then you have your choice of many baits to go after the bream. And I haven't tried pearl barley, but that may work. Regular worms may work. I mean, those bream in that spot are biting so actively right now. Even if you are behind in leveling up your bait harvesting and don't have access to things like cottage cheese dough or garlic dough or pea porridge, um, there probably are still ways you could still have a decent time catching the bream. And with both of these spots, if you have just regular bream mix or regular tench mix and you've already made that up, then um, I'm sure that those would still work quite well in these spots. And even if you're really low level, just gotten to Oldberg and you're like we've done in our leveling videos using, you know, quote unquote, fake bream mix or fake tench mix with just some common ingredients in there of baits or, or flavors that you know that the, these fish typically like then you'll probably do fine as well. Both of these spots seem really healthy. Um, and it's like, you know, really, if you are at level at Old Berg, it is a great time to be here when, when it sort of aligns that you've got a really active bream spot and really active or options for tench. Um, it's hard to beat that in certain terms of the amount of silver and experience you're getting for uh you know anyone even into your low 20s i would say this is it's going to be competitive with anything else you'd be able to do so we'll go a little bit longer i i think that the afternoon hours with as as with so many types of fishing in this game once you hit noon or 1 p.m it does slow down significantly You'll still catch occasional tench, um, but it's not like it is in the morning. And so I don't think we'll sit here for an unnecessary amount of time making this video. But uh, but that means that, you know, maybe it's not strong for 24 hours straight, but it is uh, with just a little break in the afternoon, it is solid fishing between the bream and the tench. So take advantage of it if um, if you're looking for a good spot to get some some decent XP and certainly some nice silver. Uh, cafe orders will frequently rotate through Oldberg to address either bream or uh, tench. And the fact that you're occasionally getting either the white bream or the eyed or the burbot in the other spot is also going to increase your chances of hitting cafe orders. So all around a healthy time to be either leveling through Oldberg or coming back here um, as a higher level player just because you want something to uh, farm for silver and experience and it's just a fun, fun it's just fun fishing bream and tench fishing are both really fun and active um, they're different tench a lot of people like tench fishing is because the spots often move they're kind of streaky and so you have to make adjustments but it's really cool to see you know bream going after cottage cheese dough again it's been a while here at old berg that's um the most recent time I remember using cottage cheese dough for bream, I think, was at Cory. And but what's especially cool is seeing the leaderboard for Tinch have cheese on it. I mean, that's you know that for the longest time that was always the case, right? Cheese was out of stock because everyone here was trying to catch Tinch, and uh, cheese was the thing. Well, and by the way, you can see how healthy it is. If the weekly leaders aren't tench at Amber or somewhere else, then you know that Oldberg's really healthy with tench right now. Um, but more recently, we've gotten away from cheese for tench. Tench have been biting on honey dough, cottage cheese dough, you know, other things. So it's really neat now that we've got some older bream baits coming back and the original, like, original cool, like, everybody's got to have cheese to go after those tench is, is back in play as well. The scary thing for low-level players is, though, cheese and grass carp go together. So 
And I and I that's one reason why I would encourage you to do what we're going to do right now, which is to go ahead and stop in the afternoon. You can see that the bites have slowed down. What you're more likely to see, I think, is that mid-afternoon grass carp versus you know trying to get that one or two more tench. Like if we stayed here all afternoon, yeah, we probably have a couple more marker tench, but it's not ideal tench time. So I don't think that's, it's not as likely that that's when the trophy's going to come. But uh, there is a good chance that that is when, I think it's actually faster. Yeah, let's go back across the bridge this way. That is when a grass cart might, might wreck your low level gear or your small 6.4 liter, no matter what gear you're using. And if you want to focus on the tench, then you stay at the tench longer in the evening um, till probably 10, 11 p.m. If you want to not miss any bream, then you want to be set up with your bream bait in the water by 10 p.m. at the latest, maybe even a slightly earlier. But it is kind of nice, like they sort of complement each other on times and especially with that bream spot feeling like it is strongest um, in the overnight hours, that really complements the tinch spot. So I think you can do both pretty well balanced. Let's see what the cafe is looking like right now. But before we do check the cafe, I'll at least give you a, we fished for, um, 36 minutes. We didn't hit the trophy this night, but we still made 162 silver. I mean, it is, you know, easily 200 silver an hour. And that's just according to, ooh, the trophy bream is up. That's really tempting. But, and then our silver is going to go way up with cap A. I mean, there's 33 silver there. And so that's going to help a lot. It's likely that you will get a four kilo grass carp if you go for tench for too long. Also, if you know, if you look at the cafe first, like we could have used pea porridge on all three, still gotten a lot of the bream and also hit this white bream order. We also hit the eyed order for 25 more silver. So, you know, you can see how a spot like that is going to allow you to um, really make a lot of silver across the board. And, I, and a lot of, and like I said, trophy tenches are coming out and trophy bream. So that will also increase your, uh, your silver intake significantly. Okay, hope you enjoy this video. Uh, if you are fishing at Oldberg or thinking about fishing at Oldberg, these are a couple spots that I would recommend checking out. Y'all have a good one. I'll see you next time. Peace out.